So if you guys haven't heard already, the 12 volt high power plug is finally getting changed. There's finally some actual acknowledgement that there's something wrong with the plug and the adapter end, but it's also getting a name change. It's no longer gonna be the 12 volt high power adapter or 12VHPWR, it's now gonna be the 12V-2 by six. And apparently this is supposed to fix the problems of having your very expensive paperweights burning this much money and time and effort to keep it running right. Hey, Day. Day. Mm. Day. What? We got work to do. Yeah, I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free-to-play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II recreated with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving 7 days premium time, 1 million credits, 300 doubloons, and the tier 5 premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. So this comes to us courtesy of Igor's lab. Uh, it, it's about a week old already. We talked about it on the RTFM show, which is our weekly podcast every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific, uh, right here on YouTube. But uh, I wanted to go ahead and put a video out because um, it's interesting that finally there are some key points here as to what we can expect there to be uh, change-wise. So if you guys aren't aware, PCI SIG, that's where these standards and the specs and the recommendations and everything come from. It's not from NVIDIA, it's not from Intel but they get collaborative efforts from various board manufacturers to get input on, on the power needs and the power designs and stuff. And then PCI SIG is responsible for coming out with these specs and the recommendations. The problem is like anything else, <clears throat> you sometimes realize things maybe weren't built exactly as they should. The RTX 4090 has clearly shown that when you draw that much power through that connector, there are some shortcomings. The 4080 and below tend to not, and yes, I know this is a 4080, like it says on the box, the 4090 is over there on the bench, hopefully not melting. Um, it's one of those things where the lower the wattage, it's not really a problem, but the 4090s, as you guys know, are just left and right still melting the connectors. So this new spec, which is the 12 volt by two by six, um, kind of has like four major changes coming about it. So we'll, we'll sort of tackle this kind of in each change category here. And like I said, you guys can go and read Igor's lab uh, article. I'll put it down in the description below. And these are things that he even said like a year ago. He's like, yo, this is not gonna fly. This needs to change, et cetera, et cetera. First things first, the amount of power draw that is expected to be able to be handled per wire. So we are looking at a spec of a minimum of 9.2 amps per pin. Now that's the 12 volt pin. And we, well, I guess technically the ground has to carry current too, right? But we are looking at a total of 55 amps of power it needs to be able to be carried through the 12 volt plug itself. I, I'm just gonna call it 12 volt plug. I'm not gonna call it 12 volt two by six. I'm just not. So that's first and foremost. It also has a temperature spec that says it is not to be beyond 30 C T or Delta T above ambient. So whatever ambient is, it cannot be 30 degrees Celsius above that. Obviously that's a smart move to make sure things aren't melting because when they start melting, they're like 200 degrees C above ambient or something like that. Um, anyway, moving on, this spec also applies to anyone running a 16 or an 18 gauge uh, adapter. Now here's the problem. As things start to happen, you start to get various manufacturers and various suppliers supplying different pins and supplying different uh, pin types. And we'll talk about that in a sec, talking about different gauges of wire. So you could even find NVIDIA itself with its own adapters. Some of them are running 16 gauge wire and some of them are running 18 gauge wire. Now, if you're not aware, the lower the number when it comes to gauge, the thicker the wire. So 18 gauge is actually thinner than 16 gauge. Some of the adapters from NVIDIA come in 16 and 18 and that's admittedly gotta be because of different suppliers as they're putting out orders to get these adapters because they gotta put one in every box of every card. You source out to multiple suppliers and some are gonna run a different material than others. So that's how you get these variants in there. But now you have your cable mods and your Corsairs and your EVGA power supplies and you got your Antec power supplies and your Corsair power supply, I think I already said that. You have all these power supply companies, Silverstone and all of them that now are also having ATX 3.0 power supplies on the market, which also have their own direct cable that go from 12 volt to the power supply end so that you don't have to have an adapter in there. 
Some of those are running uh, 18 gauge, some of those are running 16 gauge, some are running them to three PCI Express eight pins, some are running to four, some are running to two. So there's so many different things happening out there. So it's nice to see that the spec is saying, hey, at the pin, at the connection, the actual mechanical connection between the plug and the header must meet this criteria, regardless of what size wire that you're running. Which is smart because the gauge of the wire was never really the problem as much as it was the mechanical connection between the plug and the adapter, which if the wire gauge was an issue, you'd see the whole wire start to melt, not just the header. So anyways, the other thing too is there is a, there is a new spec standard slash expectation of a minimum amount of force needed to pull the plug out of the socket. And that is 45 Newtons, which translates to about 10 pounds of pressure needed to pull it out. That's obviously because of the mechanical connection needing to have a nice friction fit. Now, how are you gonna get that friction fit? Well, as I talked about with the pins, there are two types of pins that are currently on the market today. There's Astrom and then there's NTK. Now Astrom is running a completely different type of pin than NTK. Whereas the terminal has that square, you know, cause remember that's the part that the pin slides into and that's how that, and this is gonna look very suggestive, I apologize. This is where it slides in and makes that connection. Now we all know that over time, those start to work their way out. Bear with me, please. You have the three dimple design on the Astrom. And what that means is there are three nubs on each side, left and right, which those nubs that stick inside that terminal are what give you that friction force. Now the problem is if you've got the terminal running four millimeters long, the only point you're making any of those contacts is on those three dimples. So if you look at the overall surface area of the three dimple, it is not a lot of contact area. And if your plug starts to pull out, you may even not touch one of those dimples anymore or if it's completely crooked or sideways. Now this leads into the whole blame of users weren't plugging in their cable all the way. Well, there's still plenty of users out there saying they know for an absolute fact that their cable was plugged in all the way because they were checking it like an OCD madman out of fear that it was going to melt and it still happened. So it's possible that because those dimple plugs, you'll notice there's a seam right down the middle. Over time, they can wear out and start to push apart and lose some of that tension, which is not giving good contact. Now the NTK on the other hand is a four spring design. And what that means is the actual terminal sort of bows inward on both the sides and the top. So what happens is as the pin pushes in the terminal, you get four sides of the terminal now sliding along the pin, giving you a greater contact area. In fact, it's supposed to be something like 66% greater contact area. And if contact area between the pin and the wire and the terminal is the failure point because of poor contact, you can see why NTK would be the one you would want to use. Unfortunately, just about every single plug out there is using Astrom. So now we have an actual standardized spec that says use NTK. That's kind of nice to see because that alone, that one change alone could probably be enough to fix a lot of these issues. But as we move forward, there's another thing that they've changed. Because of the better contact, because of the better force needed to remove the plug, and because of um, the NTK standard, they've actually lifted the power rating, which I think so, guys, you shouldn't do that. Uh, maybe we should make sure this all works before we lift the power rating. Right now, the total board power allowed to be drawn is 600 watts, but the new spec under CEM 5.1, and they're actually calling this ATX 3.1 as well, by the way, is 675 watts. Now, the way you get this new 75 watt limit is initially they were allowing for all the board power to basically be drawn from technically through the cables, and that was our limiting factor there. And we've shown that only about 30 watts of the 40 series graphics cards comes from the PCI Express slot. Remember, that's rated up to 75 watts of power. They are now giving 600 watts to the cables and 75 watts to the PCI Express slot. I don't think this is gonna change anything. This is really just the way the math works out with the new limit. So if you look at the 9.2 amp per pin and we look at 55 amps for the entire plug, that works out to about 660 watts on the plug itself. So that's realistically where they're getting that number, but they're now allowing for the board partners to pull a full 75 watts from the PCI Express slot. That's just the way that the, the electrical math is working out. I don't think they're gonna start bumping up the power limits and drawing more power on the 4090s. At least I hope to God that they're not. Now the changes on the terminal are great by using the NTK four spring, better friction, better contact, more contact surface area, especially versus the Astrom three dimple. But the changes to the terminal side now, and this is being dubbed, uh, this is why it's being called now the 12 volt six by two. Initially the pin, which remember the pins on the board side, the 
the, the terminals on the wire side. So the pin sat about three millimeters, the full contact point started about three millimeters inside the header. So that's how far it already had to go in before it started making full contact. The new pins are a little bit longer. So now it's about two millimeters inside the, the header. So now you're getting full contact sooner and what they've changed is the way that the actual tip of the pin is designed. So now we've already talked about it, it sits about two millimeters behind the edge of the plug instead of three on the full, um, where the full contact starts. But they've changed the, the pitch or the chamfer of the point. So right now it's a pretty long tapered point and that's just to index when it slides into the terminal. But now it's a shorter, more blunt chamfer, which is still enough to guide it, but that means there's still more contact surface area on the pin. So the pin is longer, there's less of a taper, there's more contact area, and you couple that with the NTK terminal, we're looking at very good contacts on there. One of the other major changes that they made though is a safety mechanism. So you guys already know how the four pin sideband works. Each one of those that is occupied is basically just a ground. And all that ground does is tell the graphics card, hey, Here's how many plugs we have plugged in, and that's usually referring to the other end of the cable where it plugs into the power supply. And each one of those was good for 150 watts. So by default, you would get 150 watts, no matter what, out of the plug if none of them were plugged in. The problem is if you tried to boot up like a 4070, 4080, 4090 and 150 watts, it's not enough startup wattage, you just get a black screen, nothing would happen. But lower end cards that exist today, like the 4060 Ti and whatnot, would boot on that because they're low watt parts. But now, we have a minimum of a 150 watt spec that takes place now on the new sense pin. So there's actually some different stuff that's gonna have to take place in the power supplies and the way they communicate with the graphics cards. And I suspect that this is why the 4060 non-TI has a, a six pin, is it six pin or an eight pin? Whatever, it has a PCI Express plug, not a 12 volt high power plug. And I think that's because this card was in development while PCI SIG was updating the specs. And because that card is gonna be below 150, I don't think they wanted to screw around with the 12 volt high pl power plug or now the 12 volt two by six and the new 150 watt sense pin. It just said, fine, we'll throw the old plug on it. It's such a low watt part, it doesn't matter. So now you're gonna have a 150, a 300, 450 and a 600 total board power available to it now with each one of those sense pins. So there's some changes taking place there that are gonna to have to make their way to just the way the logic is with the GPUs as well as the power supply plugs on their end and have to be updated. But that's not the only change they made to the sense pins. They actually made them shorter. So what I just explained to you is they took the 12 volt pins and the ground pins on the plug itself, which is on the graphics card, and made them longer for greater contact. They've taken the sense pins and made them shorter. Now the reason why they did that is that is your safety because if the issue here is that plugs are not staying seated all the way and through God knows what force making its way loose over time, if you're just sitting there and the PC's not being touched, how does anything like break? Well, wires break all the time just through temperature changes. Expansion, contraction of wires break them all the time. The same thing could potentially be happening in the plug. It gets very warm in there. So you could get contraction and, and um, expansion and stuff with temperature. So what is gonna happen now is because it's shorter, it means if the plug starts to come out when your system is on, it will turn off. So that would kill power to the plug before it ever got a poor contact with higher resistance, which means more temperature and a melting plug while you're sitting there playing games and never knew that this was happening. So it's a safety mechanism that if it starts to come loose, those will disconnect first before the 12 volt and the grounds inside the, the main 12 volt plug. The other thing too, is if your plug is loose, when you go to turn on your system, it won't turn on at all. Now here's what's interesting about this. I was actually having a conversation with cable mod about the sense wires. And one of the things I've heard people say to me recently on 40 series graphics cards, I get lots and lots of emails, especially when I do videos like this, more will flood in, I guarantee it. People telling me they're, they'd be gaming and then they'd get a black screen and 100% fan speed. And the only time I'd really ever seen that in the past was on like the 1080 Ti issue with EVGA when they had the bad VRMs that would then go into like a weird mode where the picture would shut off and the fans would go to 100%. But he was telling me, if, and I wanna test this, I won't do it today, but I wanna test this, that if you start to wiggle the plug loose slightly and you get a sense pin or even, not even wiggle the plug, but the sense wires are so delicate and sometimes they're not braided inside the rest of the plugs, which means if that wire gets damaged or broken, starts to pull out, he said what'll happen is if you unplug one of those sense wires while the card is still running currently, 
it'll go to a black screen with 100% fan speed. So I'm wondering if that's a sign that people have had that your plug was loose or something is wrong in there and you didn't realize it. I'm just hyperbolizing here whether or not that's the case or I'm guessing, but it's just a weird piece of information that I that I sort of correlated with that conversation. Um, the other thing too is they're, they're putting a minimum spec on how long the wire needs to be coming out of the, the plug before a bend can start and that that needs to be mechanically constrained so that no tension at all can be placed on the pins inside of the plug. That's the wire side. So if you put a tight bend on there, the outer radius is longer than the inner radius. So those plugs could be pulled. Now remember, they're just held in there by a little barb, a little tiny little piece of metal that clicks in. And if you yank on it, you can bend those barbs back and pull the pin back. So you can have a combination of so many things happening to lead to these melting plugs. All of this sounds like a great idea. All of this sounds like it could potentially fix the problem. And this is really, really only going to apply to RTX 4090 owners and whatever maybe 4090 Ti that comes out in the future, if they come out with one. What does this mean for your current GPUs? Well, obviously your current GPU is not gonna use the uh, current new spec that's supposed to be up. I don't know if these will even make it to 40 series. You can guarantee this will be on whatever the next gen card is. I still think we wouldn't see AMD using it. I think they're gonna hold off still on using this. Very unlikely Intel is gonna use it, even though they were a part of the PCI SIG design team for it. <laughs> but um, I think this is something that we can at least expect to, at the very, very least, what I think current owners need to do and I think you need to pressure the companies that have the power, whatever power supply you have. Cable mod, I hope you're listening. You need to be using NTK on all of your adapters moving forward. I think this is a no brainer. It's probably gonna be very expensive. I also feel like anyone running the three dimple should be RMA slash service billet bulletin slash, I don't wanna say recall because that usually indicates a safety issue, but this, this still could potentially catch fire. I feel all plugs out there running the three dimple need to be exchanged with the NTK. The NTK would be the simplest and safest way for current users not being able to take advantage of this new spec to have some peace of mind that their graphics cards are not gonna melt their power plugs. Fortunately, people like um, Northridge Fix who are repairing these cards on a daily basis by just soldering on a new 12 volt high power plug could theoretically start sourcing the new plug, which is denoted by an H++ embossed on the plug, by the way, that's how you'll know the new one, and upgrade cards that have failed, or maybe even offer an upgrade service to existing cards if you're willing to pay for it as a user. As a user, you are not gonna be able to say, I want this for free because this was changed after I bought my card. Unfortunately, it's the early adopter plague. If you if you early adopted something and it came with a flaw, you own that flaw, right? It sucks, but it is the way that it is. And trust me, in a perfect world, we could all send our cards back and get new ones in return. You know that's not the way the world works and we can scream and yell as loud as we want. NVIDIA is not gonna do it. But I think this would be a neat service that uh, Northridge Fix could offer. Source these new 12 volt two by six plugs and retrofit existing boards to the new plug and then get the new wires from the manufacturers when these start rolling out. But at the very least, I feel like anyone offering any cables, any adapters, anything at all, and this is DeBauer as well with his wire view and all that, needs to be using NTK terminals. I just have a feeling NTK might've cost more, or maybe there was an availability issue when these were all being ramped up in production, and that's why we're seeing Astrom everywhere. But it's funny, because apparently PCI SIG has even discouraged in the past from using Astrom, but <laughs> that's pretty much what everything is. <sighs> So anyway, those are the major changes that we're seeing here. Um, you guys can see the full specs and we put the images up and you can see the measurements and all that sort of stuff. I love how Igor kind of goes on at the end to say, this is all the same shit that we should have seen from day one. But you know what? Sometimes you gotta get out there and put millions of them in the market to realize we fucked up. <laughs>